tribute yeah. to Frank Dimel of Dimel Guitars. Right. You're located, you're, where, where are you located? Well, actually, yeah, we are located in Berlin, Germany. Uh, we just moved outside to the countryside, but we have been in Berlin since 25 years. Been doing this a long time. Yeah, I mean, the longest time uh, in my life, but uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look young and sprightly. Excuse me? You look young and sprightly. Thanks for so having much. been in this business for so long. Yeah, I, I was starting making guitars uh, when I was very young, like 16, and, and uh, when I was moving to Berlin, I started uh, uh, s s uh, studying, and uh, I uh, chose industrial design as a study, and but uh, I found out after like uh, half of the study that it's not my thing I like. Uh, I'm into music, I'm into making guitars since my youth, and so I settled my business uh, during the study, and. Uh, started my own company. And wow. Since then it's like 1998 I'm working under the name Diamond Guitar Works. Congratulations. Thank that's you. a long that's a long time to be Yeah. Yeah. It seems like it's still growing. Yeah, we have uh, we will have our um, anniversary next year. I guess it's already yeah, actually 20 years now. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. And you've been working with our friend Curtis Novak for a long time. You've had a long relationship with him, exactly. it sounds like. Yeah, it's like uh, there was a customer coming into my shop in Berlin and he had a, uh, I think, 62 Jazz Master and he didn't have the original pickups inside. And he, I said, well, what kind of pickups do you have inside? He said, yeah, I, I, uh, I bought Curtis Novak. And I said, what's that? And, uh, yeah, check it out. And I said, okay. And uh, to me, these pickups uh, in that moment were like the most closest I know uh, uh, what uh, these kind of uh, guitars should sound like and it was so transparent, so clear and it just gave me the right, uh, it, it was like a wow, that's it, moment. And I thought like, wow, this is a really good pickup, I have never heard it in that quality. And I thought, wow, let's get in touch with Curtis and look up the internet and so. And I wrote an email and said, I'm doing this and these kind of guitars, and uh, can I have, can I order some pickups? And I found out that he's especially a guy for offset guitar pickups. Right, right. Yeah. And I thought, oh, this is amazing because everybody else, like, uh, you know, the big brands, uh, yeah, okay, they are doing humbucker single calls for like uh, Strat, Les Paul, or whatever you. Yeah, and uh, this guy is uh, maybe thinking the same I'm thinking, and so why not contact him and uh, go into a deeper relationship? Because I think uh, every luthier looks out for something unique in his guitars. As at a certain point, you think, okay, I'm I'm not using the big brands anymore. I mean, let's look for something special, something unique, and that is Curtis Novak for me. What what is it specifically about? Um, the sound of his pickups that, that, that struck you? Well, it was the mo most, uh, mostly it was the transparency and the, the overtones which came through. So for me, the pickup was acting as a, uh, as a perfect microphone. And that is also what Curtis is saying. He says the pickup is a microphone which picks up uh, the string vibrations and if it's sort of a, like a filter. And if it does it go very good, it's a good pickup in my sense. And, and, and so that's what uh, his pickups were doing. And, and, uh, right. it, seems, it seems like you both share a, uh, an affinity for forward thinking design elements, um, but with, with, a, with a respect to tradition, but, but kind of the more obscure tradition, like the offset, the foil, you know, that the things he does, the things that you do seem like they, they would, would yeah. marry. Exactly. You, know. you name it. Uh, I mean, it's uh, especially the interest for the uh, yeah slightly different uh, versions and the other kind of pickups which are also have which have been around uh, in the 60s, 70s, maybe have forgotten or people thought like, well, that's a cheap pickup, it can't be good. But uh, that's nowadays we see everybody likes the uh, Guya tone Tysco pickups and uh, is into these kind of uh, constructions and. Uh, well, it's not a matter of quality. It's in, in music, it's a matter of uh, uh, expression. And if you can express yourself musically uh, through some type of, uh, like, um, Tysco pickup, why not use the Tysco pickup? You don't have to use these big brands all the time or so. And, um, 
So yeah, that's unique for my in my sense. That's unique. Yeah. Kind of a, a, a search for character in the sense. Yeah. It seems like you both have that in common. And you know, it's not necessarily like you're making guitars or he's making pickups to to appeal to every taste. It's kind of like specific a lot of the time and and that's something that you know I think is special when you kind of just do what you're gonna do and not try to be a, a, a product for everyone exactly exactly um, the guitars I'm making um, they have they do have the same goal and so it's uh, just uh, for me naturally to look out for some uh, pickup manufacturer who also has the same thinking and uh, to have it special texture to have a unique sound or uh, just uh, that, that, that it fits to, to my ideas uh, it's, it's just great and um, it, it worked like uh, yeah it, it just worked together and uh, he always he always uh, likes also my ideas I have I had some couple of ideas uh, I gave uh, to Curtis and asked him if he can realize that for instance uh, I asked him, can you do me a three-tapped uh, P90 and let's see if that would work out. And he said, yeah, no problem, I try and I do it. And um, yeah, and he's open to that. He's open-minded and of course does that. And uh, so, yeah, that's the, how we do our relationship now. Yeah. It's probably special to uh, find somebody to have a relationship like this, a professional relationship who's willing to take risks and kind of go out of their way to uh, to try something new, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's probably not as common as one would think to find those like-minded people. Exactly, yeah. I mean, uh, but, uh, for me it's just naturally that it has to be like that because we don't want to stick into the history and uh, there's a lot of history in the guitar world and people are, yeah, well, pretty conservative, especially in the vintage. Uh, world of guitars uh, it has to be like that it has to be like that it's uh, but uh, you know we are not living in 1959 we are living 2016 and we can yeah uh, just uh, work on on this i mean people are flying to the moon but uh, pickups are still made like uh, uh, like harley davidson so so i mean it's uh, <laughs> yeah. well, this is a good time to be doing this it seems like there's a lot of forward thinking um action going on in the guitar world right now in the boutique world yeah which is great yeah, it feels like it's a kind of a golden age exactly i mean th there are so many uh, interesting luthiers out now and uh, they all are inspired and uh, they love their work and they want to be, they want to make a unique uh, work uh, and, uh, it's amazing and i really like the my colleagues and um, everybody inspires me as uh, as i inspire them and uh, so it's sort of like a community a huge community mm -hmm. it feels like that and it's fun being here and looking around and seeing you know running across these really interesting products and designs that people are coming up with yeah you know it's great speaking of which i'd like you to if we, if you would explain the uh, the leslie system that we got to experience yes. earlier it's amazing Thanks a lot. Yeah, well, it's a um, pretty old idea from a friend of mine called Pascal Stoffels. Uh, he uh, well uh, was uh, in the end of the 90s uh, living in Berlin, and uh, he uh, I got befriended to him, and he said, "Hey, Frank, you are making guitars. I'm making uh, some electronic stuff. And uh, are you interested in that?" And I said, "Well, what are you doing?" Yeah, I've just uh, had a great idea. Um, I, I, I put a motor in my guitar. I said, what? Yeah, I put a motor in my guitar which uh, lets the pickups rotate. I said, how, like, you really mechanically or what? No, just the signals. And that was basically the invention uh, of the pickup Leslie. And uh, since then we, uh, oh, well, he moved away and uh, we got uh, disconnected and later connected again. And I asked him, well, should I continue on the idea? It, uh, we should do it. We should do something about it. I mean, it can't be that it is not, uh, nobody's working on that. He said, okay, yeah, of course, uh, let's work out something. And so we did some, um, invested in some um, research and I developed a, a secret uh, on a digital way. Uh, which uh, lets uh, the pickups rotate uh, by uh, panning them from the neck pickup to the bridge pickup and you can adjust the speed and the intensity so it's an effect on board and uh, 
as the pickups are rotating, it's actually the same as you, if you would do uh, if you would move the toggle switch all the time. It's just automated, and uh, it's a oscillating sound, which is very uh, very uh, beautiful, very musically. It, it makes fun to play, and it's, it sounds a little bit like Univibe, but uh, also like a Leslie. But the, the, the source is from neck and bridge pickup, which makes it uh, unique because you have sort of phasing while these are switching and it makes a lot of fun to play this. It's an amazing, amazing thing you've come up with. Um, I think that will probably, that probably will do it. I mean, unless there's anything else you'd like to say. I think, Excuse me? Unless there's more you'd like to say, I think we've kind of got, we got what we need. Yeah, I think we got it all, and uh, thanks to Curtis again for realizing the pickups for us, and uh, it's just great. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right.